to another installment of Kicks Magazine. I'm your host, Angela Rossi, and here in the heart of the West End at the Match Bar, I'm sitting with the lovely DJ Sarah Love. Aww. <laughs> Welcome to Kicks Magazine. Thank you for having um, me. For our viewers who don't really know, you can tell us a bit about yourself. Who is DJ Sarah Love? Um, I am born and raised in London. Um, I'm a DJ. I built up my name through originally through a party called Kung Fu in London, a hip hop party. Okay. Um, from there, I went on to do a lot of like international touring and working with a lot of dope like hip hop artists. And then from there, I started working with the BBC and MTV. Um, and yeah, so really, I've just been. I'm just uh, yeah, <laughs> working as a. a DJ. Well, I'm mostly well known as a hip hop DJ. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So. And so, like, growing up surrounded by music and the arts, you must have had a lot of, you know, advantages that not many are privy to. Aww. How did that develop you musically and artistically? Oh wow! What a cool question. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely had a massive input on me. Um, and like, both my parents are musicians, so at home they were always having like band rehearsals or like they would sneak us into concerts and into clubs and things like that to see um, to see shows and you know going backstage with them to, to uh, different concerts and things like that so it's like and then yeah just being exposed to a lot of incredible musicians like whether that was first hand like people my parents were working with or like I say them taking us to clubs like Ronnie Scott's or something like that um, so yeah it definitely made me think oh this music thing's quite nice like I like it I feel it kind of thing and then at the same time it showed me that it was viable for me to do this in a professional capacity and then at the same time because my parents uh, were professional musicians mm -hmm. themselves they could relate to what I wanted to do and they were supportive of it kind of thing whereas like some people you find where their parents are just like hell no you wouldn't be doing that, that. <laughs> wasting <laughs> time yeah. that exactly like go and get a proper job like, which is fair enough kind of thing but yeah so it just meant that I had the support of my parents um, and at the same time they inspired and stimulated and facilitated like my fascination with, with, with music kind of thing and then it, we had a lot of instruments at home and things so I had access um, to yeah a lot of stuff that yeah maybe some people it's, they had to fight more to find it kind of thing. Yeah. And um, apart from DJing, what are your other passions in life that fuel you creatively? And um, like, what are your muses? Who are your muses? Who do you get inspiration from? Oh, <laughs> that's another really nice question. Um, see, that question always brings a tear to my eye. Oh. Damn. Um, you, my big passion in life outside music is family, is love. You know, Sarah Love is more than just a name. Like, for real, like, my friends and my family, uh, that is what that's the world to me kind of thing and that's what inspires me to do everything and that's what keeps me grafting you know because without them I don't know how I would be inspired you know to or, yeah I don't know what my motivation would be kind of thing so yeah my, and being an auntie to my niece and nephews is like a <laughs> is a big thing to me and um, yeah so like that's my number one thing when I'm not working I'm with my family that's probably like my I'm a big family person so yeah that's that definitely inspires me and then yeah just like keeping an eye on artists who I think are cool like you know and just being stimulated by a dope art that you come in contact with but you know I'm passionate about um looking after my body <laughs> and um, so eating right. Uh -huh. I have a few philosophies about eating right and, and I'm passionate about family and I swim every day. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so those are like the things that keep me going. Brilliant. Um, you've got to be pretty strong will to get as far as you have in the industry. What advice can you give any young or budding artists or DJs um, on how to have longevity in a business? I think integrity and skills equal longevity okay. you know so it's like all this kind of x factor era that we're living in now where it's this kind of get rich quick schemes and like you don't have to put in the work you can just go on a talent show and be discovered overnight and then what you find with people whose careers have gone that way it's like often they haven't got the foundation exactly. beneath them to support them over a long period of time or it can just be very overwhelming to suddenly have these things on your plate that yeah that you have to deal with you know so I think when you've come from the sort of ethos that I was taught which is um, make sure you're good at what you do know your market 
and you know, grow up put in the work, mm -hmm. earn your mm -hmm. stripes. You know, I think people, anybody I know who's come up with they, those kind of philosophies, they are like, I'm not saying this about myself, I mean, like, they are, in my opinion, like legendary people okay. who their name stands for something and that's why they okay. keep working. So I think it's just important to have credibility the way you have credibility is by having respect and love for your craft and so putting the time into being good at what you do I think is really important and I think that can really go a long way skills and integrity so taking that narrow road instead of the wide one and trying to build yourself up yeah I mean it's interesting saying it like that the narrow road instead of the wide one because yeah I think it can be good to be niche mm -hmm. you know it's very good to be versatile and it's yeah. very good to be able to diversify you know like me as a dj i'll do lots of parties not just hip-hop parties mm -hmm. i'm mostly known as hip-hop parties but sometimes you know i'll be playing reggae or soul or funk kind of thing you know so it could, it's good to be able to be versatile um, but at the same time i think it can be good to be niche because people know you like when people think okay I need a hip hop DJ who's the best. Like, if you're known as that, this is the definitive person to go to you for that. I'm not saying that's what I am. I'm just saying that can that can go a long way. I think. Like, you know, if you're looking for a turntablist, you know who to turn to. Turn to like, and I, 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 I think that's a good thing, and I think that gives you credibility. Yeah, because rather than it's like, oh yeah, I'm just whatever you need me to be today. Okay. What you need me to be a, a pop, you know. Okay pop singer who does tap dance at the same time or do that like you know if you're the jack of all trades master of money yeah like you know but it's good to be really good at one thing as well i think yeah okay. um you've got a lot of doors open for you right now from your really show. fill me in what's going on what's going on <laughs> you've got a new show with um cypress hills dj mugs oh yeah and you're also the um, official dj for alec black's tour yeah can you tell me a bit more about that oh so um yeah the the dj mugs uh, i'm going to be doing his opening for him at his london show it's okay. part of um i think it's a world tour he's doing um with dj cuba and uh, myself and dj 279 are gonna be holding down london and the turntables um opening for mars and then uh from december i'll be the official tour dj uh with Allo black so i'm going to be like living on the tour bus with wow. with them and we're, it's going to be quite intense i think because it's literally like back-to-back -back shows and i'm just so proud of like Allo because he's killing it and it's like all the shows he's doing it's like oh two like you know he's doing really massive venues and things like that so it's you know it's amazing i'm so happy for him and i'm so proud for him and then it's dope for me to be Are a you part a of that nervous, experience no, should I be? No. <laughs> you great at what you do anyway. No, no. New. Yeah, no. I'm not. I don't, I'm not really someone who suffers from nerves. Like I'm someone who gets like adrenaline. Like and maybe that's maybe that's what people mean when they talk about nerves. Um, but it's funny because my mum said to me, "Yeah, if you don't have nerves, you shouldn't even be doing it." <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, mummy, that's a bit harsh." But no, no, no. Like um. I don't really get nervous, to be honest, because like, I don't know, I just don't think about like, oh, I'm going to be standing in front of 5,000 people, and oh my god, like, I just try to stay focused on my job at hand, which is I need to be really good at this kind of thing, and um, so, yeah, I just stay focused on that, because I feel like, you know, you're only as good as your last set, so I want to make every set, like, the best that I can make it kind of thing so um, I just try not to focus on nervous energy you know okay. um, you seem to have an eclectic taste of music from anything from jazz to say hip hop um, can you describe how especially hip hop has such an important place in your life seeing how sometimes it's such a bad rap in the media explain to me how it's influenced you positively oh my god hip hop is like there's not hip hop is only positive hip hop like there's rap music and there's hip hop you know hip hop is only a positive thing you know and i just find it beautiful on so many levels on a personal level i think it's 
you know, that's my foundation as me as a person because hip hop has always been around me. Like my sisters subjected me to a lot of dope hip hop when I was growing up, kind of thing. So it's only been a positive influence on 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 my life. And then also, Darren, I mean, it, hip hop has given me a livelihood, and it's it's I've been able to, to work off that. So you know, that that can only um, be positive. The amount of incredible people, dope people that I've gotten to know or got to talk to, like yourself because of hip hop you know like and also on a personal level in terms of artists like what they put into their music and how that makes me feel is a great thing like you know the, the positive impact that people's music can have on um, artists music can have on people I think is, is wonderful so on a personal level it's like that and then I just think I'm in awe of hip hop and I love hip hop what it's done for the for the world and what it's done for our community kind of thing I think is such a beautiful inspirational thing and then of course that's been jumped on and you know by other people and corrupted in different ways but I just think hip hop is only a positive thing. Because I believe that music doesn't only it transcends only you know just the sound it makes it's a spiritual affair as well oh, you have a connection to it you can listen to a cd and feel like you know a person yeah. through it so yeah. for the people who say hip hop is just about cars and money and that kind of thing what would you say to them? Um, I would say I think it's important to understand okay well hip hop emerged in the 70s, mm -hmm. the beginnings of hip hop, and it kind of um, had a well-founded shape by the 80s. And then towards the end of the 90s, like the early noughties, you had like the corporate invasion of hip hop mm -hmm. where they kind of identified that, you know, this could be a cash cow, because mm -hmm. we see like how popular all these artists are, right, how can we have a piece of what these people are doing kind of things. This is our people's move movement and expression. And then when you have the corporate invasion of hip-hop, that's when you have the emergence of rap music and the dominant domination of rap music in the charts. And that really being, um, you know, promoted to, to young people. So there's rap music and there's hip-hop. Hip-hop is something that has values, it has cultural context, it's an articulation of a people's voice, it's the streets newspaper, and I'm, I don't mean the streets as in, well, the streets newspaper, as in this is how we express ourselves, then you have rap music. I don't think any of those kind of things are really important in rap music. Rap music is literally just speaking with rhyme and rhythm on top of an instrumental. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about like cars and girls in the video and all that kind of thing, like those are images that have been perpetuated by the corporate industry mm -hmm. in their manifestation of this thing, rap music, yeah? which is a corruption of our culture yeah and then hip-hop music i don't think the values of hip-hop music are about cars because when i think of a lot of the artists that i champion um you know and it's not all people go oh yeah you know the mother nature like i know you know like i love mop but it's like the backbone of their music isn't like my car's so fat you know what i'm saying like so i don't think um so yeah, it's just a shame because people get the confusion of these issues um, that they're not so comfortable with that get promoted and, and mobbed so heavily with rap music. Um, they get linked in with being something to do with hip hop, and in fact, it's not. It's just that the corporate world has promoted elements of our culture, you know, and turned it into its own beast rap. So I don't really feel any connection to that. I don't listen to rap music. Yeah. Beautiful explanation. Thank oh, you. Cool. <laughs> Um, sorry. And how do you, being in such, you know, a media-based industry, how do you stay grounded? How do you stay authentic? Um, you've got to have a strong character, I mm -hmm. think. Um, I think it comes down to what your values are as a person, because I'm not really someone who, I'm not that motivated by money or fame like I always remember when I was young I always said I want to be recognized by name not by face mm -hmm. kind of thing so it's like and these are things that have happened come to me as a result of doing something that I loved kind of thing rather than you know for a lot of people I think they they have some feeling for celebrity and for um, money um, but those things aren't really that I wouldn't rate them as high things okay. to me at all. In fact, celebrity is weird. Like I find it very strange kind of thing. So um, for me, I find it quite easy because I'm just repul. I, I I don't want to get lost in that world. You do I want because to you love it, not for the fame, not for the lights. 
Yeah, and because I'm just so in awe and in love with hip hop culture and music and the art of expression and artistry and creativity and people's voices and all that kind of thing inspires me and you know I just I want to be a part of that like you know life is short so I want to be part of something that means something to me you know it's like I don't need um, that other stuff so I think for some people though it's easy for them to get corrupted mm -hmm. and then that's when you know we have these terms like sell out get used yeah. kind of thing because people feel the pressure of oh ish. I mean oh damn now I'm like a high profile person I need to be driving a Benz yeah. oh damn well so if I need a Benz I need more money well I can get more money if I start playing this kind of music I don't yeah. really like it but I better play it and then you know you find you have a lifestyle that you're trying to maintain and so then you want to do things to be able to maintain that mm -hmm. lifestyle but ultimately like um, trying to live up to all that kind of materialism and stuff is um, can be distracting from other things that are good to enjoy in life you know so yeah for me it's just it's easy because I'm not those my motivation isn't fame and money Thank you. um you've been around the world Africa, Australia and the US um, you know it seems like a pretty much set for world domination <laughs> Um, do you sometimes marvel at what at your accomplishments, especially being a female in such a male-dominated industry? Oh, <laughs> I never do. And then I was like, only now, like listening to you, I'm like, yeah, I have been to those places. <laughs> That's quite cool. <laughs> like, yeah, I, you know, um, I very rarely actually stop and think about anything that I'm done. Like, I just like deal with each day at a time. I'm like, right, today. I've got to, you know, go and do this show kind of thing, so I'm just focused on that each day. So yeah, I just very rarely think about like, oh yeah, when I was nominated to this, I don't think about those kind of things. So yeah, it's funny, like, you know, because just when I talk, when I do interviews like this or something, because people ask me about certain things, I'm like, yeah, shit, I did that. That's kind of crazy. Amazing. Some people don't even need their area code. They stay where they are. They don't explore life for what it really is. Yeah. And for you to be so young, as far as you had, it's pretty remarkable. Oh, I think, you know, like the best thing anyone can spend their money, the most life enhancing thing anyone can spend their money on is travel. Yeah. Like the what you learn and take away from being able to go to another part of the world and see other solutions to life mm -hmm. or survival is like, you know, that's mind altering kind of thing. So for me to be able to do that, to be taken to these places and as a DJ is just like an incredible, incredible blessing, you know, that I'm, you know, I, I always try to honour when I go to those places by being, really being as good as I can possibly be for everybody. Um, you have a full track record of creative success. What can we expect from you in 2012? 2012, wow. Well, um, I'm kicking off 2012 in an Australian tour, so I'm going to be out there um, for like a month. And then as soon as I come back from, I mean, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be doing a lot more um, travel. I've got a few personal. I'm someone where I'm always like, I never, I never want to talk about things before they're happening because I'm always scared to jinx things. Like, um, but yeah, I have a few like personal projects that I'm um, working on, and I'm taking. I've, in this last year, I've taken an interest in. Um, some film related projects so I'm like um, yeah I'm just interested in taking some exploration into uh, film work in different capacities and stuff and um, and writing and I want to do um, more performing again because like you know my originally I was involved in a lot of live music okay. and um, then as my DJ career took off it's like really taken me away from those, those other things so yeah I'm just looking to do a lot more like writing and performing and stuff as well. Yeah, I must say, <laughs> Finally, last but not least, how do you get your kicks? What is your, how do you get your inspiration in that? What's your thing? Um, honestly, love, like, love for people. People, it's all, everything is all about people, isn't it? There's nothing more important, like, in this world than um, time with people and, yeah, just the, the immense love that I'm, I'm surrounded by and that I have for like my sisters and my niece and nephews and my parents like honestly those that is like my my 
that's my motivation and my, my inspiration because I want to kill it for them, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, and I'm, I'm a big nature person and I, sw I really love swimming, <laughs> so I'm really sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sad and pathetic. Simple you want me to say something like, you know, I go bungee jumping at the same time as getting a tattoo. And, no, um, so really it's love, friends and family, food and <laughs> Sound like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, people? It's your favorite London B girl, DJ Sarah Love. And remember, for your daily kicks in music, fashion, and funk, there's only one place that you need to hit up, okay? And that's kicksmagazine.org.uk. Peace.